volume check to one. Let's put fresh RSS on a Synology NAS. And this is it. This is this is what the uh, the fresh RSS is looking like. So it's basically just like your own personal newsfeed. So you can click on an article and get the gist of it. Get some pictures. You can uh, yeah, you can subscribe to forum posts, two channels, podcasts. It, it's pretty nice. So check this out. This guy's paralyzed by indecision because he got into servers. It's going to be you one day. It is pretty much me now. So good luck to you on that, uh, Melise. So anyways, let's let's put fresh RSS on a Synology NAS. So I'm going to start off by going to freshrss.org, which is their official website. You can check out a demo here. You actually don't need to go here. I just wanted you to have their official website. But instead of using their official Docker Compose file, I'm actually going to go to linuxserver.io. I'm going to use theirs because it's uh it's it's easier to use. So if I come in here, I'm so I just went to the top, click fleet, and under fleet, I'm going to search for fresh RSS. So I'll click fresh RSS, and then there's a section called Docker Hub, and to the right of that is a hyperlink, I think is what it's called. If I scroll down, I will get the Docker Compose text that we need. So I'm going to copy this and head over to my Synology NAS. So to put this on here, I just need one program and that's Container Manager, which if you don't have, check out the Package Center. Type in Container Manager and type it in a little bit better than I did and it'll show up and you should be able to install it. If you don't have Container Manager, that means it's not officially available for your model of Synology NAS. So maybe Google your model of Synology NAS and see if others have gotten it to work. Now let's go into, let's go into Container Manager. I'm going to have to scoot you over because I'm going to have to open up some other things soon. And then I'm going to click on Project, Create, and let's do, let's, for project name, let's, let's keep it simple, Fresh RSS. Why complicate things? And then under Path, let's make a path for these files to live in. So I'm going to go to File Station. And then I'm going to go into my Docker share, which you should have when you create, um, I believe when you install Container Manager, gives you a Docker share. And then here I'm going to create a new folder called Fresh RSS, but you can call it whatever you want. So back in Container Manager for path, let's set path to Docker, Fresh RSS, select, and then under source, I'm going to click create Docker Compose, and I'm going to paste in that Docker Compose text that I got from their Docker Hub page. So in here, I just need to make a couple of changes. Time zone, you know, I don't think you really need to change this, but I'm going to change mine to America forward slash new underscore York because I am on the East Coast time zone. And then for volumes, if you've never used a Docker Compose file, basically think of it like a set of instructions in a text file, this Docker Compose.yml file. It's just a text file. It's just this right here. So there's a section called volumes and you can see it's kind of two folder paths, right? There's a folder path, colon, and then a second folder path. Typically with this stuff, you don't have to worry about the folder path to the right. That's for Docker. Uh, and in this case, that is true. But to the left, it wants a folder. It basically wants a folder to put its config files. And this is, a, this is good because this is a folder that you can actually back up. So if you ever had to move this to a different machine or if you just back it up somewhere with hyper backup and one day your Synology NAS goes kaput, can use that backup config folder and you can relaunch fresh RSS how you're doing here, but just use your backup folder instead. So let's make this folder. It's just called, we're just going to call it config. So I'm going to go into file station. In my Docker fresh RSS folder, I'm going to create a folder called config. Go back here and I'm going to delete this first part and just put a period. So basically what this period is saying is, hey, whatever folder I'm in, whatever folder, not folder, folder I'm in, I'm looking for a config folder. And this docker compose.yaml file is going to end up in this fresh RSS folder. So that's why that works. But if you were to right click, click properties, copy this location, you could put that in here instead. And that is the same exact thing. But I prefer using a period because it's shorter. And then for ports, we need to change this because 80 is definitely not going to work. You can basically use anything up until like 40 or 50,000, maybe even 60,000. <clears> I'm going to keep it simple and just type in 6060. 80 zero will not work and 443 will definitely not work. But 6060 should definitely work. And then, okay, so we just need the PUID and PGIDs. So these are pretty easy to get. We're going to go into control panel and then task scheduler. Let me delete these. I'm going to delete these. I already know what they are. And then I'm going to remake them again for you. So let's go to create schedule task user defined script. And then for task, I'm going to type in get ID. Except you can name it whatever you want, but that seems pretty short and descriptive to me. Then I'm going to uncheck enabled and then task, get, uh, task settings. See this run command user defined script section? I'm going to type in ID greater than sign. So ID space greater than sign space. And it's going to make a text file with this ID information that we need. So I'm going to go back into file station. I'm going to right click my Docker share and click properties. And I'm going to copy that location because that's where I want to save it to. 
and then I'm gonna type in forward slash id.txt. So you can name this txt file whatever you want and you can put it wherever you want, but I feel like this is simple. So that way, if you need to refer to it in the future, you'll always have that id text file in your Docker folder. So I'll click OK, and then I'll click Get ID, and then I can just click this Run button and click OK. So the reason I don't have it enabled is because then it's going to run that every night, and I really just need to run it once. So I'm going to exit out of here. If I go in the File Station and click Docker, it should show up, my ID.txt. If you're already in the Docker folder, make sure that you click out of it first and then back in so it refreshes. So if I double click here, check it out, UID and GID. So the GID is 100. That's pretty easy to remember. But 1028, let's just say volume data 21's memory is not that good. So I'm going to copy it. Exit out, exit out. So PUID is 1028 and the PGID is 100. So your PUID is probably different, but your PGID is probably 100. And this is good to go. So I'll just click next. I am not going to set up a web portal via WebStation. Click next and then start the project once it is created. Click done. So now it's going to pull and extract all the files that it needs. And we're looking for an exit code zero. And Fresh RSS is pretty small. So this should, this should happen pretty quickly. All right, the networks are creating, containers are good, and exit code zero. And then we should get a message here that it was a success. There we go, close. And if I go into project, it should give me a green light soon. And then it's going to contain, it's going to have one container. So if I go to containers, check it out. Fresh RSS is up. So we're good to go. So now how do we access this? If I go into project and double click Fresh RSS and then YAML configurations, remember when we typed in 6060 for the ports? So this is important. Ports like volumes, kind of the same deal. This is your host port. This is the port that we need and that we can change. The one to the right of it is for Docker. You don't need to touch that. <coughs> don't worry about that. Don't mess with it. You can have multiples with the same port numbers. Don't worry about the one after the colon though. It's the one before the colon that we're gonna change. Or sorry, that we did change. We changed it to 6060 and that is how we access Fresh RSS. We're gonna type in the IP address of our Synology NAS colon 6060 and that will get us to our Fresh RSS install. So if you don't know your IP address, just come up here to widgets. Make sure that um, you go click on the plus sign system health is checked. And then under system health, there's a section called LAN and it should be, it's probably LAN one and your IP address should be here. So mine is 192.168.86.60. So yours is probably 192.168.1. something. If it's not there, you can click on here and click through the LANs and get the ones that works. It might not be 192.168 something, but it probably is. So let's try it out. 192.168.86.60 colon 6060 and saying all those numbers, probably very confusing for you but we're in. If it's not working for you, make sure that you're not typing in HTTPS. It has to just be HTTP. And if you're using a Synology firewall, you also have to make sure that port 6060 is now open. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get here. And just remember, you cannot access this outside of your home network. So if you're going over to a friend's house or the coffee shop or on your cellular data, you're not gonna be able to access this. You're gonna have to look into either using a VPN to get into your home network or you can look into a reverse proxy and then you can make your own custom URL like rss.synology.com. That's only if synology.com isn't taken. I have a feeling that it is, but you're in. So I'll set this up real quick so you can follow along with me if you need to. So I'm just gonna type in English and then for checks, look, this all looks good. Okay, all right, go to the next step. And then type of database, I'm just gonna use SQLite because that is easy. Submit, username, let's type in volume 21. Maybe that's what I should name the channel, but I didn't. And now VD21 is what is the, uh, the acronym for this channel, I guess. Password, let's make a strong password. I'm gonna go to Bitwarden Password Generator and click one, two, three, four, five, regenerate, copy that guy and put that as my password. Submit, complete installation. Let's, let's log in, volume 21. Keep me logged in for an entire 90 days, three months, long enough for me to forget this password. And you're good, you got fresh RSS going. And if you want to add a subscription, it's pretty simple. You can add, and you can pretty easily add in a YouTube channel. So let me click plus. It's, it's a little confusing on how this works, but you can, you're basically adding in one of these. So let's add in a category and let's type in YouTubes. And then let's go back and add an RSS feed to YouTubes. Who do you think we should enter? Let's do youtube.com slash add volume data 21. And I'll click add down here. Nope, not a URL, because I gotta type in HTTPS colon slash slash. And we should have, yes, it's been added. Volume data 21 has been added. So if I go back to Fresh RSS, check it out. I got a news feed for all of my videos. If I click on it, you even get a little thumbnail and a description. So that is how that works. And you can use it for anything. You can use it for new sites. Just make sure, like type in whatever site, like if you're looking for Mac rumors, just Google search Mac rumors RSS feed and you should get a link. Or if you do, I think it's self, 
hosted.show. Here's a popular podcast. They have an RSS feed, so you can just come down, just right click and then copy that URL and you can add it in here. You can just go to, bah, bah, bah. I'm gonna go back, plus category, podcast, cool. And then under podcast, I will add an RSS feed and paste in the self-hosted show feed, click add, and it works and we're good. So if I go back to Fresh RSS, all of their stuff is showing up. And if I click on, click on a title, I get a full description of it. And there you go. So now you've got your own news feed. I will say, if you're using this on Android too, so you can, you know, when you're at home, you can connect to this with your IP address colon 6060 on your phone also. You might have a better time using an app. There are two that I like. There's one called Read You Fresh RSS. I'm gonna type in GitHub also. This is one guy that uses the material UI, so that's not bad. And then there is, yeah, so this is, this is what it looks like. Right here, look at the screenshots. It's gonna look a lot better than going to the URL. So you can still go to the URL on your phone, but it kind of looks not great. It's a little it's a little hard to read. So using Read You will help out. And then there's another one. What's it called? I think it's called Fresh... Fresh Me? GitHub, is that it? Nope, that's not it. What's it called? Feed Me, yes. Feed Me, check it out in the Google Play Store. This guy right here. I've been messing around with this a little bit. So this seems like a nice app as well. But yeah, so if you want to improve your Android experience, I would suggest getting one of these apps and then they should have the instructions on how to log in. You need to make an API password. You can't use your normal login, but that's pretty easy to do. You can just follow the instructions on these sites. But there you go. You have your own self-hosted RSS theater news aggregator thing. Good luck to you.